What up guys, if you're new here, I'm Jake, and I recently had a client on board to Smartsheets, which is sort of like supercharged Excel with more features. But as usual, there were a few things the client wanted that Smartsheets didn't offer, so I implemented them myself using their public API. What surprised me about this process was that there weren't any walkthroughs on YouTube about how to use their node SDK. So here I am to fix that. To outline our issue, the problem is constantly repeating manual work. If you've checked the forums and spoke with a Smartsheet representative and automating this manual work is not possible, that's a problem. Now the solution is to create an automation that can execute all of the manual steps for you. This automation should run automatically when relevant changes are made in Smartsheet. Let's take a look at our solution architecture. We'll be using Smartsheet's publicly accessible API to alter sheet data and building our own node application to handle events sent to us from webhooks we set up. If you aren't familiar with webhooks, please pause the video and read up on them. They're basically a way to trigger HTTP calls based on events. So here's how it works. Someone makes a change to a sheet we have a webhook set on, which triggers an HTTP POST request to an endpoint on our API. Our API uses the Smartsheet SDK to alter sheets in response to that event. So let's implement this architecture to solve an example problem. Say I own a business called Jake's Cakes. At our corporate office, if someone needs to borrow a laptop for whatever they're doing, we just have them check it out using this sheet. For inventory and accounting purposes, it's important that we know more about the equipment that is rented out, but that probably shouldn't be in the rental sheet. Instead, let's track the computer details in a second sheet and then pull the friendly names into a drop-down list on the rental sheet. Here's where we run into an issue. Smartsheet does not let you source drop-down values from another sheet. So let's create our own automation for it. Before we go too crazy, I should mention the source code for this project is in the description. So feel free to download it and try it yourself. But if you want to know how I did it, stick around. So the first thing you want to do is set up your sheets in Smartsheet that you want to manipulate. You can see here I have a rentals and a computer sheet I've set up and inserted some dummy data into. You'll also want to grab your Smartsheet API token. Moving over to the source code, we're using Express and Node.js. And for the folders, we have a constants folder, which holds our configs, a modules folder, where I've written some helper libraries for logging and using the SDK, node modules for all of our dependencies, and routes, which handle all of our API endpoints. App.js bootstraps our app, and apptest.js has all of our unit tests. The gcloud file, the app YAML, and the service account JSON are all used for hosting this API with um, GCP. So if you want to use a different platform to host your project, just ignore those. So the first thing we want to do is set up the Smartsheet SDK, which we've installed with NPM to make some calls to the API. I created this little module file to abstract away and direct calls to the SDK and I use the public API documentation they have here to do it. But it's pretty straightforward. You create a client object, and the client object has a bunch of built-in methods you call to manipulate your sheets. Since we're planning to create some webhooks and manipulate some sheet data, I wrote some helper functions here. Now, to get started, we want to get the ID of both the rental and the computer sheets from the API. You can see I set up a simple route for sheets here that allows us to get those IDs from the API. We just need to run the project locally hit the endpoint, and bam, we have the sheet IDs. Let's go ahead and save those in a constants file. The next part's a little tricky. Before we can create the webhook, we need to create the endpoint and deploy it. We have to do this first because Smartsheet verifies webhooks by actually hitting our server and expecting a specific response. So if we don't deploy our server and let it respond to Smartsheet, we can't enable a new webhook. Anyway, we have this webhook route, which I called columns, kind of a bad name, I know. It has our automation logic, but more importantly, it has this middleware handler. This handler checks for a Smartsheet hook challenge header. This is the header that is sent when our webhook is being verified. So we have to listen for that and send it back if we see it. The next step is to deploy our project. Obviously, you're probably not complete with your automation code at this point, so feel free to comment some things out before you deploy. The main point is that we deploy up this webhook endpoint that returns back the hook challenge header. So how do we deploy the project? Well, anything really works as long as it's served over HTTPS. 
I'm using the GCP, more specifically Google App Engine for my project. If you want to do the same, head over to the GCP console, create a new project for your API, create and download a service account JSON file for your project, and dump it in the project directory. Then, create this simple app YAML file. From here, if you have the gcloud CLI installed, you can run gcloud app deploy and you're good to go. Now that we've created a webhook endpoint and deployed it, let's take that endpoint and use it to create our new Smartsheets webhook. As you can see, I have the webhook route set up quite similar to the Sheets route, and we can use the basic CRUD operations to create a webhook. See that in the webhook object, we are passing the callback URL, which is the URL for our webhook column endpoint, which we just deployed. The ID of the sheet we want to trigger the webhook, which is the computer sheet, and optionally, a subscope that limits the columns that can trigger this webhook. In this case, we're just using the column ID for the friendly name. From here, you can run the project locally and use Postman to make a request to this webhook endpoint. But we're not done yet. Next, we need to set the enable property to true for this webhook. Take the ID that was returned to you after creating the webhook and send it to the webhook's update route with this body. Smartsheets will actually make a request to the previously deployed webhook endpoint. If the challenge header is returned properly from our deployed project, it will enable your webhook. You can check if it was enabled by just running a GET request against the webhook's route and checking the status. Now that we have a webhook that is verified and active, we probably want to add some logging to catch any errors that go on in our API. Here I've created a small module around GCP logging, but you can use whatever logging package you want. Here you can see I'm catching any errors in the webhook endpoint and then logging them out. If you want to see those errors, open up the GCP Logging Explorer and they should be right there. Finally, with all the infrastructure stuff done, we can actually set up our automations. Let's take a step back and understand what we've set up so far. With a new webhook enabled, a request will be sent to our webhook endpoint every time there is a change to the friendly name column on the computer sheet. When there's a change to the friendly name column on the computer sheet, it means that we need to update the dropdown for computers on the rental sheet. So inside of our function, we make a request for the friendly names of the computer sheet. From there, we create an array of strings representing the various friendly name options. Lastly, we pass that array into an update function to update the rental sheet computer dropdown to have all of those options. After that, we just return a 200 status code as our automation is complete. Deploy this code up and now we can actually see it in action. I'm on the computer sheet now, so say I am an employee of Jake's Cakes and I have recently found out that the Surface Pro 8 is the incorrect name it should be the Surface Pro 9. So I'm going to change that and I'm going to hit the save button. Now we should expect to see this updated name in the dropdown for the computers column on the rental sheet. And there we go. In the dropdown for the computers column on the rental sheet, we see that Surface Pro 9 is now the available option for that computer. Additionally, on the logging explorer on the GCP, I can see that our webhook endpoint was hit. Last but not least, it's probably important for the stability of the infrastructure to add some unit testing. For this project, I just npm installed jest and super test and created a simple app.test.js. These unit tests just confirm that the Smartsheets client is created properly and the requests that we need to make go through as expected. It also runs the automation to make sure that it's functioning as expected. Now this use case was pretty simple, but as you can see, webhooks are extremely powerful and you can use them to create all sorts of different automations. All right, that's it for me on this one. Don't forget the source code for this whole project is down in the description. And don't forget to drop a comment and say if this was helpful and what you'd like to see in the future. See you in the next one.